are very well- Thank you! This pony requires no intro. She started it all with this line. Once upon a time, in the magical land of Equestria. You're about to watch Pony, and we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Celestia moments in MLP. Good morning, sister! Join us? Too tired. Please excuse me. For this list, we're looking at the moments where Celestia is at her best, even when it's when she's recovering from her mistakes, but we won't look too much in the moments where she's doing things off screen. Whether they be caring, brave, or humorous, we're looking for overall best audience approval. And as always, one moment per episode. Every pony's asleep. You're talking to yourself, Celestia, but there's no pony else to talk to. <laughs> Number 10, Celestia defeats Daybreaker, a royal problem. Let's start this list with one of the best episodes that put the two royal sisters in the spotlight. When Starlight swaps cutie marks between Celestia and Luna to fix a sibling problem, the two princesses carry out each other's duties. Celestia was very out of her element when she was all by herself at night. Her job got even worse when she had to deal with her evil side, Daybreaker. In order to defeat Daybreaker, you need only to trust in your strength, as I do. The moments she shares with Luna, fully admitting taking what she does for granted, really made these two connect and turn this nightmare no more. So, um, uh, did you talk to yourself? Um, a little. <laughs> Number 9, Celestia Just Like Us, Ponyville Confidential. During Season 1 and 2, we never saw Celestia as anything more than regal, important, and even intimidating at moments. I thought this was just an unofficial casual visit. There's nothing casual about a visit from royalty! There were very few funny moments with her, and it made Celestia seem very serious. After the Gabby Gums column featuring her eating cake, her image became much more fun and relatable, both in the show and in the fandom. Celestia just like us? Gabby Gums doesn't value any pony's privacy. Celestia eating cake jokes became a staple in the fandom, and her character became less intimidating and led to funnier writing for her character. Can you imagine how dull it would have been if I hadn't invited Discord? Come on! <laughs> Number 8. There is no wrong way to fantasize. Celestial Advice. Celestial Advice was one of the biggest episodes of Season 7 because it was the first Celestia episode. We got to see her laugh, we got to see her worry, and we saw her proud of her work through Twilight when she was going through what she did in the past. I can't just send her off to Celestia knows where without thinking it through! Hmm, I was not aware that I was an expression. During a demonstration of possible futures for Twilight, Spike was nitpicking Twilight's fantasy. That was when Celestia gave this beautiful lie. Doesn't seem like something Starlight and Thorax would do. Uh, this is Twilight's fantasy, Spike. There is no wrong way to fantasize. Thank you. This line was both funny and insightful, and we're glad it was Celestia out of everybody to say it. Number 7, The Wedding Gift, Slice of Life. While the first Celestia episode didn't happen until Season 7, the first true sister moment Celestia had was in the 100th episode. It's only for a short moment, but Celestia and Luna forgot to bring the wedding gift for Cranky and Matilda. What do you mean you left it on the counter? I thought you were bringing it. Oh, well, this is just wonderful. I handled the gift for Cadence and Shining Armor. You were supposed to do this one, remember? It was a fun slice of life moment for the two sisters. We really got to see them be normal ponies for the first time ever in this show. And while there are more episodes of that now, this was one of the first and rare moments, so it made the fans react a lot. Next time, you can just bring your own gift and I'll bring mine. Fine. Number 6, Celestia Mentors Fluttershy, Horseplay. Taking all the previous moments we already mentioned, Horseplay was definitely the episode where we see Celestia at her silliest moments. It is time for a new day in Equestria. A bit more energy. It's time for a new day in Equestria! We learn a lot about Celestia in this episode, like the fact that she's a theater fanatic, she can do the royal canterlot voice, and she still has a sense of humor. Gotcha. The moment where she took charge to save the play was a great moment for her. She demonstrated great leader qualities. And she helped Fluttershy give a royal performance. Commanding. Confident. Feel the rising sun's warmth. Equestria needs you. Number 5. The Summer Sun Celebration. Princess Twilight Sparkle Part 1. The moment when Princess Celestia banished her sister to the moon was a really hard thing to do. It was the toughest thing she ever did and was an important part of equestrian history. But it is wonderful to actually be looking forward to the Summer Sun celebration. 
The Summer Sun celebration was referenced many times in MLP, but this line that Celestia gives was a real eye-opener. For my subjects, it has always been a celebration of my defeat of Nightmare Moon. But for me, it was just a terrible reminder that I'd had to banish my own sister. The new feeling she has towards this holiday was a great show of progress with how much things have changed, but the burden to carry that for a thousand years must be unbearable. And for that, we have to give props. Twilight Sparkle! Number 4, I Don't Need a Letter, Lesson Zero. This episode was definitely aimed more towards Twilight, but Celestia really stepped in at the end. She was visibly upset with Twilight, but she still loved her student. When Twilight thought the friendship letters were the important part, Celestia clarified it was the learning and growth that mattered more. You are a wonderful student, Twilight. I don't have to get a letter every week to know that. Really? That line there was probably overdue, but it showed a forgiving mentor side of Celestia that Twilight respected and models after. I would like you all to report to me your findings on the magic of friendship. When, and only when, you happen to discover them. Dear Princess Celestia, thank you for everything you've done. Number 3, The Tree of Harmony, Princess Twilight Sparkle, Part 2. The weight in this scene is heavier than it seemed. The Tree of Harmony was shown to be grown by the Six Pillars, whether she knew it or not. Celestia tampered with Star Swirl's tree and removed the elements of harmony that kept it protected. Are you sure? We have managed to discover the only means by which we can defeat Discord. When they were removed, the tree lost strength, so much that they had to put them back. Why'd all this happen now? I have no idea. Those seeds I planted should have sprouted up ages ago. Removing the elements from the tree was undeniably a great decision, otherwise Discord, Nightmare Moon, Sombra, and the main six would have been handled very differently. So it was a short scene, but you must admit, it was a very important one. Number 2. Meeting Sunset Shimmer, Forgotten Friendship Forgotten Friendship may take place in Equestria Girls, but the Celestia featured there is the same princess. Fans of Equestria Girls all saw how much progress Sunset has made, and for a long time, many wanted to see how Celestia would react meeting her again. Thankfully, it played out like everyone hoped it would. I've missed you, Sunset Shimmer. I'm so sorry. It was truly a heartwarming reunion, and she helped out a lot in Sunset's mission. After all, this was the occasion that first introduced the restricted section of the library. Are you saying I wasn't a good teacher? Oh, no, I wasn't. I'm, she what didn't I meant, say that. She didn't I... say that. I... <laughs> 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 Princess Celestia has a sense of humor. Before our number one pick, let's take a quick look at a few honorable mentions. Such a long, long way And I've watched you from that very first day Come on! <laughs> the night is still young! <laughs> also before, we would like to give a quick shout out to this week's guest narrator. Hey guys, this is the Fiery Joker, aka Josh Scorcher and Commander Firebrand. I'm the guy who does those hyperactive live-action pony reviews, generally takes ponies too seriously, dungeon master of three brony D&D campaigns, creative director of TF2 Analysis Anarchy, and your resident Celestia fanboy. Come say hi. Number 1. Celestia Forgiving Luna. Friendship is Magic Part 2. This is the first time we got to see Celestia on screen. Here we get to see it all, her grace and power, and most of all, her sympathy. Celestia sees her younger sister and asks for her forgiveness and friendship. It was truly touching and possibly the most important moment in Celestia's life. Time to put our differences behind us. We were meant to rule together, little sister. Sister? Will you accept my friendship? After how burdening it was for her to banish her sister, it must have been incredible to see her again after so long and it was all achieved through friendship and understanding. Celestia, you rule. I'm so sorry. I missed you so much, big sister. I've missed you too. Do you agree with our list? Now that I would like to hear. What Celestia mode made you want to worship the sun? For more top tens posted every week, be sure to subscribe and check out watchpony.com for more. Thank you for watching. And again, a big thanks to our guest narrator, Josh Scorcher. Be sure to check his channel out, and you may now 
look away. How many times has Celestia helped us, guided us, been a warm, calming voice over our shoulder? Twilight. <laughs>